Hello friends and welcome to Channel Thinkpedia. Uh, in this video, I'll be describing uh, about rapid sequence intubation. So, what is rapid sequence intubation? Basically, it is a series of procedures which we uh, perform while doing uh, orotracheal intubation uh, without interposed uh, bag and mask uh, ventilation. Uh, so why why one has to do a rapid sequence intubation the advantages are it prevents the risk of aspiration so you any child who comes to you in emergency you presumed it to be uh, presumed at, to have a full stomach so prevents aspiration it also blunts the cardiovascular as well as cns response to the act of intubation it also by uh, you know sedating the child prevents hypoxemia uh, struggle during intubation and trauma to the child is avoided uh, so what are the steps which we uh, perform while doing an intubation so you have to remember seven p's the first and foremost is the preparation and the brief history so in that uh, preparation history you know about in pals that ample so allergies any medication history past significant history last meal when the that patient had and events uh, leading to this particular situation or any past uh, event related to anesthesia or uh, risk uh, act of intubation so this is a brief history uh, one should know also in preparation comes the uh, what all equipments and all has to be kept ready by the nurse or the assistant so for that mnemonic is SOAPME S O A P M E so S is for the suction devices so make sure they are functioning uh, properly O is oxygen so uh, the oxygen has to be available uh, A is for airway um, uh, for the airway devices so you need a laryngoscope with adequate size blade your uh, endotracheal tube size which you calculate based on the formula and one size smaller and one size bigger tube also is available also if you are not able to ventilate the child or intubate the child backup in the form of LMA or those should be also available a uh, P is for the pre-medication or the medications which we all uh, keep ready for the induction as well as paralysis of that particular patient and ME is monitoring and equipment so pulse oximeter ECG attached and an assistant who is qualified or at least trained enough to understand the uh, monitor or the change in the readings which happens so first step was preparation so remember ample and soap me uh, the second P is pre-oxygenation so before you start preparation make sure you are as one of you oxygenate the child properly so give 100% oxygen by non rebreathing mask for at least 3 to 4 minutes so what it does it will wash out all the nitrogen and it will give you some time uh, to avoid the if you are not able to intubate on the very first go then still there is chance of 2 to 3 minutes uh, where till child becomes hypoxemic so always always pre-oxygenate with a uh, hundred percent of uh, fi2 for at least two to three minutes a uh, third p is uh, pre-medications so these are the certain medications which we use based on certain uh, situations uh, so one is lignocaine so lignocaine we use mainly for when there is a raised icp suspect suspicion or in the reactive airway diseases uh, opioids also are used to blunt the cns response uh, atropine is used when you are using succinylcholine or something to mitigate the bradycardia response secondary to succinylcholine and uh, uh, defasculation dosage of pancuronum or vancuronum has to be used if you are using scoline as a paralytic agent so these were pre-medication so how do I remember is LOAD load so uh, lignocaine, opioid, atropine as well as defasculation dose of depolarizing agents uh, the fourth p, uh, p is the paralysis and induction so here we take the drugs which will uh, sedate the child give analgesia and then we paralyze them also so depending on the clinical scenario the different drugs are used but what options we do have are is thiopental ketamine propofol etomidate uh, midazolam so these are the drugs which we can use as an induced induction agent and on that we can use paralytic agents like depolarizing as well as non-depolarizing so succinylcholine or we also have a non-depolarizing agents like uh, pancuranium, rocuranium, vacuranium that can also be used so this was about the fourth P 
Fifth is positioning. So make sure the position of the child is appropriate so that your oral as well as pharyngeal and the laryngeal axis they come into straight line. So the act of uh, visualizing visualizing the glottis is easier and the act of intubation becomes easier. <coughs> Precord pressure has to be applied. So remember, Precord pressure is to prevent the risk of aspiration. <coughs> so do not give too much pressure so that the visualization becomes difficult. Just give enough pressure to compress the esophagus so your uh, risk of aspiration goes down. <coughs> Suppose if you are not able to visualize, then there is burp maneuver that is B-U-R-P. So what with your right hand on the uh, thyroid cartilage, give backwards, rightwards and upward push B-U-R-P. So that will give <coughs> visualization of the glottis and the act of intubation becomes easier. So this was about your fourth P that is uh, positioning and uh, placement. Uh, sorry and sixth p is a placement so now with all this thing position <coughs> thought pressure you're putting the tube that is placement uh, seventh uh, is the confirmation or the proof of the uh, position so under vision is the most ideal uh, way of knowing that it has gone into the trachea only not in the esophagus also etco2 helps so in tidal co2 if that graph is there or the numbers are there that helps you whether the placement is in the trachea or in the esophagus also if you don't have those cells, even the fogging in the tubes can tell you that the tube is in the trachea and not in the esophagus you can check bilateral air entry uh, by bagging an auscultation that uh, it's equal or your tube is not placed on one right side or something so that has to be maneuvered and lastly you may get an x-ray done to see the exact position so this was the seventh p the last p is post intubation care so once the these things you have given these drugs some of these drugs had do have negative inotropy effect so make sure you reassess vitals again after the intubation blood pressure also has to be checked so many a times hypotension and may happen so that is also you might have to put the child on continuous sedative uh, drugs uh, so that your ventilation becomes easier and child does not fight on the ventilator so this was uh, these were about the seven P's or for the oh, sorry eight P's for the act of intubation that is rapid sequence intubation. I uh, if you have any questions or any query uh, do write down in the comment and also subscribe to this channel Think Thank you.